Hi friends. This book is called The Pumpkin Book by Gail Gibbons. Look at all those children playing with pumpkins and I see a cute little dog on there too with a pumpkin in his mouth. The Pumpkin Book written and illustrated by Gail Gibbons. Pumpkins come in all shapes and sizes. Pumpkins are members of the squash family. There are many different kinds of pumpkins. Small pumpkins, big pumpkins, round pumpkins, tall pumpkins. Gardeners and farmers call them pumpkin varieties. Some pumpkins have a smooth skin and others have lots of bumps. In the springtime, when the sun's rays begin to warm the soil, it is planting time. Some gardeners turn the soil to get it ready to plant a small pumpkin patch. A pumpkin patch is where pumpkins are grown. Some farmers use their plows to slice through and turn over the dirt. The field will eventually be a huge pumpkin patch. The soil is ready. It is time to plant the pumpkin seeds. The beginning of a pumpkin is curled up inside each pumpkin seed. Food is stored there too. The seed has a seed coat on the outside to protect it. The bigger the seed, the bigger the variety of pumpkin that will grow. Sometimes pumpkin seeds are planted in rows. Other times they are planted in small circular areas called hills. Several shallow holes are poked into the hill and one pumpkin seed is dropped into each hole and covered with dirt. Each hill should be about three feet to six feet apart to give the plants lots of room to grow. A pumpkin seed won't sprout until the dirt is warm and water has soaked the seed to soften its coat. Once the seed coat breaks open, the root begins to grow down into the soil. It takes in water and minerals from the soil for food. After about one week, two leaves appear where each pumpkin seed was planted. These smooth leaves are called seed leaves. They begin to make more food for the plant from the sunlight and the air. So, so far we know that for a plant to grow, you need rain, water, sun, soil, air. After a few days, small pumpkin vine leaves appear. These leaves look different. They are prickly and have rough, jagged edges. More new vine leaves grow. Stems begin to grow and twist, crawling along the ground as they become vines. The vines grow thicker and thicker. They grow curly tendrils that wrap themselves around the other parts of the plant to help spread the vines. Gold-colored flowers begin to bloom. Aren't they beautiful? A pumpkin begins to grow when a grain of pollen from the stamen of a male pumpkin flower lands on the stigma of a female pumpkin flower. This is called pollination. Sometimes pollen moves from flower to flower when the wind blows. Bees and other insects help pollinate too. Pollen rubs on and off their bodies as they travel from flower to flower in search of nectar. Remember we talked about how important it is to have birds to pollinate plants? The female flower has a small green ball beneath its blossom. When the flower is pollinated, the little ball begins to grow. It is a very, very small pumpkin. Over time, it becomes bigger.
and bigger and bigger. The pumpkin skin begins to turn from green to orange. All of the pumpkins in the pumpkin patch begin to turn orange. I love the color orange. Look at these nice orange pumpkins. Here it's a little bit, here it's very green. Some green, some orange. Lot, a lot more orange and just a little bit of green. And here this one is all orange. In the fall, when the vines begin to dry up and die, it is harvest time. Remember we talked about that word harvest in the last story? It usually takes from 80 to 120 days, depending on the variety, for a seed to grow into a ripened pumpkin. It is ready to pick if it feels hard on the outside and sounds hollow when it is tapped. Often, shears are used to clip the pumpkins from their vines, leaving about three inches of stem. The stem helps to keep the harvested pumpkin from getting moldy. During the fall, more and more pumpkins of many shapes and sizes appear at roadside stands and in stores. Fall makes people think of country fairs. Sometimes awards are given for the biggest, the prettiest, or the strangest pumpkin grown. The biggest pumpkin ever grown was in New York State in 1996. It weighed about as much as a small car, 1,061 pounds. At fairs, there are pumpkin pie tasting contests too. Oh, I love pumpkin pie. When the pilgrims came to the New World, friendly Native American Indians showed them how to plant pumpkins. Often, the Indian women were the pumpkin farmers of their tribes. The pilgrims ate pumpkins every day in different forms, such as pumpkin bread, pumpkin pie, and pumpkin seed cereal. Thanksgiving reminds people of the pilgrims' first harvest season. They wanted to give thanks for the food that would have, they would have through the cold winter months. They celebrated by having a Thanksgiving feast. Halloween is in October 31st. A long time ago, people believed that ghosts, witches, and goblins roamed around that night. Some people built bonfires to scare them away. Later, October 31st was called All Hallows' Even, Even which means Holy Evening. It was the night before a church festival called All Hallows or All Saints' Day. All Hallows' Even was shortened to Halloween. Today, Halloween is celebrated in different ways. And look at all the, look at that jack-o'-lantern. Some people carve out pumpkins as jack-o'-lanterns and put a little candle inside to light it on Halloween night. Look at that crescent moon. Remember we talked about the moon? Other people decorate pumpkins with paint, glitter, and other decorations. These pumpkins can last a long time because they have, haven't been carved. No two pumpkins are alike. They all have their very own personalities. All lined up on Halloween night, they are glowing sight to see. Isn't it amazing that all this began with a few small pumpkin seeds? Glowing pumpkins glow. And that's our story, another story about pumpkins. I hope you enjoyed this story, friends. We'll read again soon.